Hello, SpongeGex here, and I'm going to try out the new uh, Space Jam, a new Legacy video game on Xbox One. So, yeah, it looks like this isn't going to be a really good game or anything. I mean, uh, from what I heard, the game is only four hours long. Surprisingly, it's free to play, though, and it doesn't look like there's any microtransactions or anything, so that's kind of shocking. But, so, yeah, this was originally pitched um, ahead of time. Um, Warner Bros. announced they were making a new game on Space Jam, and they wanted um, to hold a contest to see um, people submit their ideas for how it should be, but, um, and if you won, not only uh, would you get, like, a private screening of the movie, but you'd get a free Xbox and all that, um, new Xbox, that is. Um, and so, um, admittedly, I entered the contest, and clearly I didn't win, but, um, and... I gotta say, by the looks of it, though, I'm very underwhelmed. I mean, they already announced it was gonna be a retro-styled game, so right away, they were limiting off the creativity. Um, personally, I would have rather had a, a computer-animated game, and um, I think it would have been neat if um, uh, it had, like, two different modes. Like, it kind of had, like, um, a traditional single-player platformer mode where you get to recruit more players and stuff like that. Uh, so, inspired by the plot of... Um, the second Space Jam movie have it where you get to roam around different worlds based on Warner Bros. properties and find other Looney Tunes there and recruit them and then so it's like that's the single player mode but then there's a separate mode in the game where it's like a basketball mode and you can either play traditional basketball or the new video game inspired basketball as seen in A New Legacy and personally that's the approach I would have wanted. And so I would have tried um, asking for a game like that, but yeah, the contest was a... It doesn't even feel like the contest was for real. They just wanted it to feel like people were actually getting involved with the making of this game. But it really wasn't when they, were all, when they already had presets for how the game was going to look. And so I can imagine a lot of people had a lot of great ideas for how they should make a Space Jam game. And in the end, the only playable characters we get are Bugs, Lola, and LeBron James. And, yeah, it's like, come on, you have a huge cast of characters. I mean, even the PS1 Space Jam game had more characters than this. And it's a shame that we can't get a proper Space Jam video game. Uh, imagine, though, um, uh, so instead of having Michael Jordan or LeBron James, what if we got to create our own avatar? So it's like um, we get to be the stars of a Space Jam story or something, and... Um, it either um, interact with or um, be the coach of the Looney Tunes and heck uh, even we don't even need avatars let's, let's just have it be entirely a team of the Looney Tunes and then hidden characters you can have like um, the Monstars the Goon Squad and, and for fun they could throw in Michael Jordan and LeBron James's hidden characters and I mean I'm just so disappointed that instead we're getting an old retro beat em up game and as if we don't get enough retro throwback games to begin with and I'm not against the idea of um, this, you know, it's like if this was just a side mode in a, um, a Looney Tunes game or a Space Jam game, that would have been neat, but the fact this is the entire game. I wonder, are these supposed to be like little side attacks? But, I mean, even the sprite work doesn't look that great in this. A lot of this looks like it was made in MS Paint. Uh, I'll go with Roadrunner. So, yeah, I'm playing as Lola Bunny with Roadrunner as a card, whatever that does, and... So yeah, sorry for the long intro, I just wanted to get some thoughts out of the way on how kind of underwhelmed I am with the bottom result of this game, but from what I heard, it's really fun though, but um, just like right when you're getting into it, it's over with before you know it, so yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. They had all that hype about that contest for making a new um, Space Jam game, and this is what we end up with, and I don't know. Like, I, I knew my idea was too big for them to actually want to pick it. And that's probably the main reason why they ignored a lot of people's ideas. They probably saw it as, eh, that'll be too expensive. And so they chickened out. But, so, in my idea, I said, um, it should, um, it should have, you know, the basketball mode as a separate feature. While the main mode would be a beat-em-up game. And then, um, I mentioned how it should have some crossover characters. So, include some characters from, like, Animaniacs or Tiny Toons. So, it's like, right away, it's like, yeah, you could tell that was probably the reason I didn't get picked. Um, oh, too many outside characters. I don't know, but... I mentioned how it would be cool, though, like, if, um, the characters had, like, um... 
I can kind of see, like, this is one of the ideas I mentioned in the game, though. Like, if they had a beat-em-up gameplay, um, have it where the power-up could be, like, a basketball, and, um, you could fi find, like, little power-ups to improve, improve its abilities, like, have it where you could shoot multiple, um, basketballs at once, or... So, yeah, this is definitely a retro-style beat-em-up, and, um, I, I like how, um, despite how... You know, everyone argues how Lola Bunny isn't loony enough. I like how they at least made her moveset very loony. You see her pulling out all these gadgets and contraptions, and that's kind of cool. I do like that. But, yeah, uh, I, um, I, I recently did a review of uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy, and despite all the negative reviews it's getting, I actually enjoyed the movie. I really liked it. Um, now, I can't really compare it to the first one, though. I can't say which one I liked better. I like both Space Jams for different reasons. Um... But yeah, I, I was not disappointed with Space Jam A New Legacy, unlike a lot of people. I've heard a lot of people say they hated it, but it's a very mixed movie. Either people loved it or they hated it, but... And surprisingly, I wasn't too disappointed with the new Lola Bunny either. Like, I was confused on why they got Zendaya to voice her instead of Kaf Susie, like originally, and... Especially after there were rumors originally announced that she was reprising her role. So it does come across that they, um, you know, just fired her last minute after she recorded a bunch of stuff. Just to get someone more recognizable. That was kind of annoying. But... It is disappointing there's only three characters, though. Like, I can't complain with who they chose, though. Like, at least when it comes to the Looney Tunes. I mean, Bugs and Lola are... Some of the more recognizable poster characters of Space Jam. And LeBron, of course, he has to be in there because he's the shoehorned um, celebrity hero of the movie. So, uh, I like how Tweety's like, I like how Tweety's the ball returner. That's kind of cool. And... Nope. But yeah, it's too bad this isn't more like the actual, um, a recreation of the actual movie. Like, it would have been cool if they were actually going through actual worlds inspired by... Um, Warner Bros. properties, and that's another reason why I think it would be fun for him to make a proper Space Jam video game, like a 3D platformer with a basketball as, um, you know, a second mode. So it'd be like two games in one, a single-player platformer, going back to the good old days when they had some fun little 3D platformers with Looney Tunes characters, like, um, uh, Looney Tunes Lost in Time, or whatever it was, the one with Bugs Bunny on PS1. I remember playing that as a kid, um, at, like, my babysitters once, and I remember thinking that was kind of fun, and... It'd be neat to see another game like that, and I'm trying to think, the last Looney Tunes game we ever got um, when it comes to the 3D platformers was one I, I always wanted to play but never got a chance to, and that was um, uh, Acme Arsenal. That was um, one of the first ones to be on um, an HD console, but um, it was on, uh, it came out on Xbox 360, but it was also available for Wii and PS2, and I, for some reason, you know, I, I had a bunch of those consoles, but for some reason, um, I just never had a chance to play that game, unfortunately, and I, I know it got mixed results, though. Um, some people said, like, um, uh, like the, the cutscenes are kind of fun and stuff like that, despite how the graphics haven't aged well, but, um, it's like, other than that, it's like, some people said the gameplay wasn't that great, but, yeah. It's a shame that, uh, we don't get enough, uh, Looney Tune games anymore. It's like, recently I got into World of Mayhem, um, on the, uh, Android, and it's like, I don't plan on actually spending money on that though but um you know it's like it's very similar to a lot of those other um kind of um rpg collect collectathon kind of um mobile app games and um i gotta admit it's one of my favorite ones though not only because of the looney tune style but um i think it's easier to unlock stuff in the game without having to cough up money compared to games like a disney sorcerer arena where that one's just a cash well that one's just a cash begging cow you know and uh, it's so annoying and I mean, yeah, Looney Tunes, um, World of Mayhem does ask for money, but, um, I feel like it gives you, like, even the stuff they have on there is, doesn't feel as overpriced as the stuff you get on Disney Sorcerer's Arena, where almost everything is, like, $99 just for all that disposable trading card crap. It's ridiculous, and, um, uh, it would be nice to get, an, you know, a proper Looney Tunes game again. A good one, that is. Um, I always said it would be fun to get, um, you know, let's see, how do you charge it? Okay. Wish I knew that earlier. But yeah, I'm surprised this came out as a free game, though. I was thinking it was going to be, like, $20 or anything. So even if you are disappointed in this game, I guess it's nothing to get mad over. I mean, yeah, I'm just upset we didn't get, um, 
you know, a more developed Looney Tunes game, if anything. Like, um, because it feels like, uh, this one was just rushed, um, that's why they chose to give it, like, this kind of art style and stuff like that, but, um, I'll admit, for a retro throwback game, it doesn't look bad, though. It definitely does feel like, uh, despite, like, how it's running a little more smoothly than most old games would, it does feel a lot like a game you'd see on Super Nintendo, and it's kind of cool. So yeah, I know uh, they use Zendaya's voice clips in the movie in uh, this, so kind of nice touch. I can imagine they did the same thing at Bugs Bunny with, uh, what was his name, Jeff Bergman's voice. And... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That thing can catch balls. But, uh, I always thought it would be cool if we got, like, a Smash Brothers clone with, um, Looney Tunes characters. And there's a lot of fun stuff you could do with, um, the characters and the, the wacky, um, violence that the series is known for. So, imagine how, like, uh, you know, like how in most, uh, video games, like, if a character runs off a ledge, it'll instantly drop. And so, it would be funny and pay good tribute to the Looney Tunes physics if, um, like, if a character runs off a ledge, they'll run in the air for a little bit until eventually they're forced to look down and then they drop like a brick. Um... So, you know, that, that'd be a fun way of using some strategy. It's like, you know, you get some air time when running off, but you don't want to abuse it. Otherwise, the characters will <laughs> fall to their deaths. And um, I just think that there's a lot of fun they could do with having a Looney Tunes fighting game. And have a lot of callbacks to so not only the classic shorts, but even the movies, including the Space Jam movies, um, even back in action. Um, have a bunch of um, unlockable costumes or alternate skins that um, are based on, like, the characters of... Um, disguises from various um, classic cartoons and stuff like that, and that'd be a lot of fun. I mean, World of Mayhem does a really good job at that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, crazy um, costumes for some of the characters. Um, it's it's crazy how they're all treated like separate characters, though, instead of um, alternate skins and stuff like that. But that's what makes it cool, though, because each one gives them their own new abilities. And... Oh. What? what was I supposed to do? <laughs> you forgot your ball, Wawa! <laughs> uh, that was a terrible Tweety impression. <laughs> Uh-oh. Robot Froggers, just what I needed. Oh! What the hell was that? I'm wondering, is there some kind of special button? Like a button you can use to... Use like a special power-up or something? Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. Only now did I figure out how to use the trading card. Uh, you gotta press, um... Let's see, um, the Y button. <laughs> Here, I, I thought I was pressing the Y button the whole time. I'm, I'm so used to the Nintendo controller. <laughs> so, what I think is the X button is actually the Y button. And <laughs> vice versa, I don't know. What are those mine bombs? Who the hell is hiding in that mine shaft? Yeah, I, I gotta say, for um, being a video game tie-in with the movie, this ha is nothing like what the movie presented. It's like none of these enemies were fighting it. <laughs> it really does feel like a nostalgic throwback video game. Um, Back then, uh, a lot of those uh, video games were made before the shows were even a thing, so, or they were being worked on before the show was finalized, so, a lot of the stuff you saw was either made up because the developers didn't know how the final show was going to be, and they couldn't just work with nothing, so they had to make up, like, generic enemies, and so that's why a lot of them felt so out of place, and that's one reason why video games like uh, SpongeBob Battle 4 Bikini Bottom get praised, because... While it is doing something different with, like, the unique enemy designs, being robots and stuff like that, um, it's like the world and some of the interactable characters are straight from the show, and they have a lot of shout-outs and tributes to the show, unlike a lot of early NES or Super Nintendo video games where 
it, it, it just makes kids go like, when did this happen in the show? And <laughs> Hard to say what my first licensed video game ever was, because um, I don't remember playing a whole lot of licensed video games on the N64. It wasn't until the GameCube era, probably, but let's see. Uh, one of the earliest examples, I guess, would probably be A Bug's Life on Nintendo 64. For some reason, that's the earliest example of a licensed game I can think of. Um, so I didn't grow up with the NES or Super Nintendo. Um, I grew up with an N64 as my first console, and I, I got that like in the late 90s, uh, around about like the same year Banjo Kazooie came out. I got it as a Christmas gift, so I didn't get to grow up. With, I didn't get a chance to play a lot of the retro games until, uh, unless you count like some of the ports you got on Game Boy or Virtual Console, really helped introduce me to a lot of these uh, classic games. And nowadays, those with Nintendo Switch, they can get introduced to them in the form of Nintendo Online, so that's nice. But, I did think it was cool how in the new Space Jam they finally had Roadrunner actually used on the court. Um, that was kind of funny. Um, especially when they were up against Kronos and so he had to slow down Roadrunner. That was kind of funny. But Okay. Here we go. One of the goon squads. So at least here's something that actually resembles something from the movie. Aside from the villain and uh, his little sidekick, what was his name, Pete? Saw him at the beginning of this game. But... Oh, I hope this is one of those games that gives you infinite retries if you get a game over, because I'm about dead. Oh, okay. So, yeah, let's see what the other... Yeah. Let's see what the other tunes do. Oh, I guess I don't have a gauge for that yet. But... Ah! I'm terrible at retro games. I mean, I'll, I'll say this isn't too bad for a free video game, though, but I, I wouldn't say this is one that I'd want to keep going back to over and over, but for a free game, it's not too bad. Kind of wish there were more moves, though. This is, this is like a very simple beat-em-up game, just a just simply mashing the X button to attack. Um, you don't have like any really cool combos or anything. But... I'm guessing uh, Bugs Bunny and LeBron will probably play very similarly, if not exactly the same as Lola. It's probably one of those kind of beat 'em up games where you no know, like indistinct. Uh, there's no distinct abilities the characters get to use. <laughs> I wasn't even aware the game was out yet, because uh, a few days ago I just uh, looked up online and uh, I was wondering, when does that Space Jam New Legacy video game came, come out? And then I found out it's already out, so I went to the store and here it's, I was expecting to have to pay like $20 or something for it, and it's like, it's free? Wow. <laughs> now this is how a free game should be, no microtransactions, no advertisements. I mean, this game practically is just an advertisement. It's an advertisement for the movie itself. But yeah, like, um, I always thought, like, if they did make um, a Looney Tunes uh, Smash Brothers clone, um, like, if they made Lola playable, it would be fun to have her moveset inspired by basketball. So have it where, like, um... One of her attacks could be like a rapid dribble, so like if you knock a character down, you can have her rapidly dribble the ball over them. <laughs> um, so just a multi-bounce attack, it can hurt them, and then have like um, the ability where she can throw the ball like really hard and then quickly catch it like a boomerang almost and um, shoot it, shoot it like she's about to shoot it through a hoop, and you know, so she'd have a good uh, project. She'd mostly be like a projectile kind of character, but still have a few moves where she could attack like close up and stuff like that. So. Like, if she's fighting up close, she could, um, fight with a bunch of kicks and punches, but... So, let's see. I'm gonna try playing as Bugs Bunny for a little bit. It looks... So, luckily, it doesn't look like, um, getting a game over will force you to start entirely over. It'll just force you to start the entire level over. That's not too bad. But 
Yeah, I still can't believe how many characters are missing in this game. I mean, no playable Daffy Duck or anything, or no Gossamer. It's ridiculous. Why is why is there cheese coming out of a cactus? So yeah, these characters play practically exactly the same. I, I gotta say, I think I like playing as Lola better though, because Bugs Bunny's attacks are just way too basic. It's just him using boxing gloves. I like how Lola just pulls out a bunch of random objects, like a frying pan, a fish. It's just so random, but why is it that, um, for some reason, the character everyone complains isn't loony enough is loonier than Bugs Bunny in this game. And Well, I did see Bugs Bunny pull out a golden mace just a while ago, but that was just like one little final attack it felt like so finish your first combo but yeah like how there was that battle toads reboot earlier this year i kind of wish that was how this game was like um you know because i liked it at first i liked the beat em up gameplay but then it's like you got all these different hybrid levels and that kind of ruined the game for me i wanted it to be more of the beat em up gameplay and I know, though, that's how the original um, Battletoads was. It wasn't all just a beat-em-up. They had a bunch of vehicle and um, tough platforming levels as well. It was a hybrid game. It tried fooling you into thinking it's one thing, but then it jumps to another. But it's just so hard to accept it, though, when you had so much fun with the first element in the game, and then you realize it's not there for the rest of it. It's kind of annoying. So it's like, yeah, this is basically more of like what I wish that Battletoads game was like, just the simple beat em up gameplay and i know this is a pretty rehash uh, game style this is like the traditional arcade game style where um you had so many clones of the style including ninja turtles x-men okay. the simpsons even even uh, scott pilgrim versus the world At least, I mean, this one's basic, but at least it plays well. It's not acting up. Um, it's not too frustrating. Yet, at least. I mean, I only got through the pe the first boss after all, so it could get a lot harder. I don't know, but too bad there's no block button. And darn it, I'm wondering how I did that earlier. I noticed how um, I was too busy talking to address it, but um, earlier Bugs did a little spin punch attack. I'm wondering how he did that. I have no idea. definitely better than Roadrunner's power-up, or he just makes you go faster in a game that really doesn't need it. That's the only thing I hate about beat -em up gameplay, is they can be so unfair sometimes, because uh, it doesn't give you a good idea of when the characters are coming on screen. You can't see them, and the fact that... Um, they don't give you enough time to let you register that they're coming before they attack you, so... It's like they can attack you without you even seeing them, and that's just really unfair. Let's see, I wonder what, uh, Granny does. I'm wondering, does she heal you or something, or... Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention about my review on uh, Space Jam New Legacy, though, is um, despite how I liked it overall, one thing that did disappoint me about the movie, though, was the soundtrack, or the, the music in the movie, at least, because I remember there were some memorable songs in the original, um, despite how there was a controversial artist behind the main song of that, but, I mean, um, like, the opening title song was pretty memorable, um, Fly Like an Eagle was memorable, and it's like, um, I don't remember any of the... Uh, songs in the background from the sequel they were just so forgettable it was mostly all just generic rap music and 
Yeah, the music was pretty disappointing in the sequel. None of it was really good. And I remember as a kid, I had like the, I had the v, uh, the cassette soundtrack for um, Space Jam the music. And God, I still don't even know how I did that spin attack. So weird. White Mamba, wasn't that the name of um, Mega Mind's like a evil coat from <laughs> Mega Mind? Was well, new suit that he was working on? It was called the no, that was the Black Mamba. Never mind. <laughs> Surprisingly, that was easier than the first boss. And Something tells me that Kronos is going to be the last one we have to fight, and I can imagine that'll be tough, because he was one of the toughest goons in that movie. He was the one who could slow down time. Amazing that out of all the characters who wanted to defeat Kronos was Granny. I had a feeling that's what Granny would do. I, I had a feeling she'd be like a health support. I didn't see her being like the attacking type. <laughs> oh, that's a nice tribute there. There's like one of the earlier designs of Bugs Bunny. And up at the left, you see uh, Fred and Wilma Flintstone's outfits. That's kind of funny. So at least not all these levels were generic. I thought the first two levels were kind of bland, but at least this, uh, I don't know what this is, a museum? But at least this one has some better tributes. Oh, I figured it out. You gotta press both the attack and jump button at the same time. Okay. That's how you do that spin attack. Cool. Uh-oh. I'm guessing that used some kind of gauge or something because it won't let me use that spin attack anymore. So I guess I used mine up. Yeah, so far I think Granny's the most useful out of all the partners. She doesn't just give you a little health, she gives you a lot of health.
Oh, there's a run button. Okay, you can run if you double tap the joystick. I wasn't sure if you could or not, but didn't bother trying before. Uh-oh. I better heal. Oh shit. I really don't like how um, the button used to pick up and throw the ball is the same button to pick up food objects because it makes it really easy to accidentally throw the ball when you mean to just uh, pick up a food object instead. That's real annoying. Personally, um, you know, it's like if they ever make another Cuphead video game, I'd love to see them try the beat em up formula next. Because we already saw them do like a traditional um, Contra uh, formula, and so now let's see how it would work with um, this kind of gameplay. Using the same art styles and all that. I think that'd be a fun idea. Um, ah! I kind of wish there were some power-ups in this game, so if you could find laying on the ground to help you out, give you an attack boost and all that, that would have helped a lot. I liked how uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World had the leveling up system, get, making it more than just a traditional beat-em-up. It was also an RPG, that was kind of cool. Let's see. God, I, I, I would love to see what Yosemite Sam can do, but uh, Granny's been too helpful in this game, so I don't want to abandon her. Yeah, if I get a game over, I might have to try it again as Lola, because there are some abilities I didn't get to see as her yet, because um, I, I was still figuring out the controls. like the the bathroom with the Bugs Bunny symbol on it is overflowing. I hope that's water. It's 
my game now. Uh oh. Am I at the final boss already? Sheesh. They don't even let you fight the other goon squads? I'm surprised. I'd hate to die during this part since I'm already down to my last life again. Especially if I get close to beating him. That's always so frustrating when you get close to being a boss and then you're forced to start all over. Never seen that. Good at dodging his attacks up to that point. Uh oh. Whoa. Ah! I double jumped and he didn't register fast enough. least favorite enemies and I think I got a game over shit okay I'm glad it just took me back to the final boss if anything glad it didn't force me to an entire level over still annoying that I gotta do this thing over but at least now I'll have a better chance at winning now that I have all my lives back except just one life Oh, okay, that's what her... Okay, yeah, I did see her do it. For some reason, her special attack is she dropped a safe on herself. I don't know why, but... It's such a weird attack for her. Uh-oh. Okay, there's one downside to getting a game over, though. You lose all your level-ups, it looks like. Because, yeah, I notice how sometimes you get, like, what's called a level-up, and that just seems to include, improve your HP, but... Since I lost all that, I lost all the um, health boost I got, so that sucks.
Yeah, I, I was just saying uh, the other day that um, uh, I really hope that HBO Max can make some kind of live-action animated hybrid series of Looney Tunes inspired by the ending of A New Legacy where you just have, it's just the Looney Tunes roaming around the real world and uh, getting into crazy shenanigans and, you know, it, it's like uh, how during the end credits of uh, that movie it showed like um, all the Looney Tunes just going around the world and um, either meeting other celebrities or athletes or just um, going to certain locations and chilling. So like you saw like a, it looked like Bugs and Lola went on a road trip where you saw Lola driving a car and Bugs was just chilling in the front seat. It's like, that was cute. And so it's like, um, I just love an entire series of that. Just the Looney Tunes going to different places and have, uh, it'd be a fun way to recreate some classic uh, Looney Tunes moments, but with, um, you know, a more realistic setting. So have Elmer Fudd chasing Bugs Bunny through like um, a real life forest or have um, uh, the Wile E. Coyote chasing the Roadrunner in an actual um, desert or something or have have them actually wander off a desert for once. I know that was against Chuck Jones's rules. He never wanted them to leave the desert, but it's like they're in the human world. They can go wherever they want. So, I mean, they already broke that rule of Space Jam anyway. So, um, and uh, they did a good job with those characters. Um, arguably, I thought uh, Wile E. Coyote was one of the more entertaining um members of the Toon Squad in the sequel. Um, he, he definitely had some of the best scenes when it came to helping the others or trying to score points. Um, yeah, he, um, they definitely used this character very well in that movie, I thought. Uh, but uh, not only would um, a live-action animated hybrid show of Looney Tunes be uh, just a great way of, um, you know, making a new show of the characters interacting with um, either, you know, real-life environments or other celebrities and stuff like that, but... Um, possibly have some episodes where um, it does tie back into the plot of uh, Space Jam New Legacy where like they have to go back to the server verse and they can travel different worlds um, interact with different properties and characters I mean there's just a lot they could do with the Looney Tunes and a premise like that and um, so far there's no confirmation if there's going to be a sequel to Space Jam 2 but um, otherwise the director did state that if there was a third one he'd want um, the main um, character of that one to be Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and that would be interesting, because instead of getting an athlete, let's get someone who's not known for playing um, basketball. I mean, yeah, he used to be a wrestler, but, uh, or if they, or if they made another Space Jam, what if they made it more of like an Olympic um, type of uh, game? So instead of just playing basketball, they play different events, and there's just a lot they could do with um, the Space Jam formula, and I, re I really would love to see more of it in the future. Wow, that game was short. People said this game roughly takes four hours long. Are you kidding me? It took me, um, just, it just took me a little over 40 minutes to beat that. That wasn't long at all, but, uh, that's kind of a bummer. But, um, yeah, it was fun while, while it was there, and I can't get too mad, though. It was a free game, and, um, just leaves you wanting a little bit more, but... Hopefully someday we can get an actual Space Jam video game, a, a more modern one. Because, yeah, there was one on PS1, but it really just looked like um, one of those old Super Nintendo basketball games with the Looney Tunes stamped over it. Um, I'm talking about, like, let's get an actual one, like a th um, one that has, like, 3D graphics. Um, so, you know, something more similar to, like, um, how there was the Mario Sport Mix game on Wii. Like, um, like imagine the basketball in that, but with Looney Tunes characters and have each character have their own special abilities um uh to help them and, you know they have their own strengths they have their own weaknesses i would love to see a game like that and like i said it would be also it would also be neat to have characters like um uh the monsters or the goon squad and you can actually have them team up with the looney tunes you, just, you can just make your own team just go crazy so it doesn't have to be just the looney tunes versus the monsters you're actually going to play as the monsters or uh, hell, uh, throw in Fred Flintstone or other uh, Warner Brothers characters. Just mix it up. Um, I don't know. but So, yeah, this wasn't a bad game, but it definitely wasn't the Looney Tune game I was hoping for. And it sure as hell wasn't the one I submitted in the contest. And it would have been nice to win that contest, but I, I knew I wasn't going to win. I entered it for fun anyways. But, uh, well, that's all I have to show for now. So, uh, thank you for watching. See you next time, and have a great day.